Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today we're going to be making some cool kind of abstract pink stroke or I've even heard it being called kind of like a saltwater taffy kind of text look. So you can see on the screen right now what, what we're going to be building in this tutorial. So you can see this has this really nice organic-y kind of paint brushy candy paint texture on top of this. Uh, and if we actually make this uh, animate, let me just open up this little gif that I made. You can see that we have this really nice organic undulation, really nice organic movement that we will be applying to our text. Uh, and this is basically what I came up with through experimentation uh, with a few things in Cinema 4D. So this is something I created before, just some like really abstract looking candy looking stuff. Uh, so I kind of took that this idea and applied it to some text and uh, came up with this. And so this is what I'm going to be breaking down today uh, in this tutorial. So let's just go ahead and get started here. All right, so we have my scene here all set up and I have my hello spline that I'm going to be using to create this kind of abstract paint stroke or uh, Laffy Taffy or <laughs> saltwater taffy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you'll notice the big thing that you want to keep in mind when you're building your spline is giving it enough depth, Z depth, that uh, you don't have your object that you're going to sweep along this spline. You want to give it enough room to breathe so it's not overlapping. So you'll see that I have very big expressive strokes on my spline and I have a lot of Z depth. So there's going to be a lot of room for a thick object to be swept along this spline. So that's the first key in getting this kind of effect set up. So what I need to do is then create an object that I will sweep along this spline. And the, th and the object that I'm going to use is a capsule object. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep this along our spline. First thing I'm going to do is adjust the orientation so it's going left and right. So we have a positive X orientation. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and to get this wrapped around our spline, we're going to go ahead and grab a spline wrap. And we'll make that a child of our capsule. And then what we have to do then is define a spline that we want to wrap this capsule object around, this geometry of the capsule. And I'm just going to choose this hello spline, drag it into the spline field. And you'll see that right now we have a very chunky looking capsule and that is because our height segments set very low. Once we up the height segments you'll see that we're smoothing everything out. And for right now I'm just going to leave this at 50 uh, because what I'm going to do and the, the workflow that I'm going to be going through with this is I want to have my capsule object fairly low poly and then I'll smooth it out later on. And the reason for this is, is because I'm going to be applying deformers that are really going to be slowing down my scene if I have a very high poly capsule here. So I'll go into that a little bit more uh, later on, but that's just why I'm going to leave this low poly for now. So <clears throat> right now I'm going to adjust the radius. So I want to make this a little bit thicker and then I'm going to adjust the height to about, uh, let's do... 1375 or so. So now we got this nice, uh, actually, whoop, undid that accidentally. And so right now you can see that we have a nice full object. It's low poly right now. Uh, right now I have the mode set to fit spline. And uh, also I have the end mode. I'm just going to change that to clamp because I don't want that to extend past the uh, boundaries of my spline. So everything's looking good so far, but again, we have to deal with this chunkiness. Uh, and the way that I'm going to deal with that and keeping my speed up in my viewport is by just using a subdivision surface to kind of smooth everything out. So by using the subdivision surface to smooth out my geometry, I can easily toggle this on and off to immediately view, uh, speed up my viewport, apply my deformations. That, that's going to add that nice like kind of paintbrushy uh, candy effect. Uh, and then be able to turn this back on and see how everything looks. Uh, so this is just to you know easily toggle back and forth, speeding up your viewport, uh, keeping everything kind of light. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is go ahead and adjust uh, some of the settings here. 
But again, I'm not gonna actually adjust any of these now. What I wanna do is apply the deformations to this object, to this capsule, that will allow for a nice uh, kind of taffy, paintbrushy kind of uh, organic look. And the way that I did this was I used a jiggle deformer. Now a jiggle deformer, if you've seen any of my past tutorials, makes things very jiggly. But one thing that's very cool about the jiggle deformer, it's very versatile. And when I apply this underneath my spline wrap, so this order is important. So I want my spline wrap to affect my capsule first, and then I want the jiggle to be applied afterwards. So that's very important. So when I apply my jiggle deformer and hit play, you'll see nothing happens. And that's because something needs to be moving on the object for it to apply this jiggly kind of jello uh, animation to it. And right now there's nothing happening. There's no, no movement at all. But one thing that you can use for uh, the jiggle deformer is actually apply forces to it to get this object to move. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a a few particle modifiers here. I'm just going to grab a turbulence object right now. And I'm going to set the strength up fairly high. I'm going to make this uh, strength about a thousand. And then to get this to work, I actually need to drag and drop this into the forces field or, or the jiggle deformer won't recognize it. So let me hit play now and you'll see that we have some very, very fast uh, movement going on, a lot of very fast turbulence. And I'm just going to bring up the scale a little bit to kind of slow that down. So a scale of 45 looks pretty good. And immediately, you can see that this is looking pretty dang cool. You can already see how we're getting this nice brush stroke kind of effect, a very organic kind of wiggliness. So in essence, what we did with applying a particle modifier, this turbulence force on this jiggle deformer, it basically acts kind of like a cloth uh, deformer, a cloth engine, where it turns our geometry into this kind of wavy... A cloth kind of object so that's very very cool so what we what we can do now is go ahead and adjust the uh, options on the jiggle so if we want to make this a little bit more pliable we can adjust the stiffness down pretty low so now we just adjusted the stiffness so it's not as stiff and now it's much more cloth like uh, right there and the uh, structural if we bring this down, this is kind of going to, you can see that that actually, uh, there's a bunch of springs that are basically holding together, uh, a bunch of jiggly springs that hold together the geometry. And when you bring the structural down to zero, it makes those jiggly or, or the springs a lot more stretchy or bouncy. Uh, so you can see that we have less form going on. So it works a little bit like a stiffness, but just think of like a spring in a mattress or the looser the spring, the more bounce you're going to get and the more stretch you're going to get. So to kind of tame everything down, you can see that everything's kind of acting a little bit uh, goofy, is we're going to bring this drag all the way up and that's going to kind of give us this nice undulation, this nice organic undulation by adjusting the drag uh, of how the jiggle is being deformed. So it almost looks like this is underwater a little bit. And then another thing I'm going to do is bring the springs down. So this is basically the amount of tiny springs that are actually uh, making these springs, the spring movements happen. I'm going to bring this down to, uh, down to one. And what that's going to do is remove a lot of those springs. So we're going to get a little bit less uh, undulation. Uh, but we're still getting a lot of really nice movement going on. Uh, so this is looking good so far. This is applying our nice organic brush stroke kind of effect to our object. And you can see I have a few lights and uh, the Grayscale Gorilla HDR Studio Kit on here kind of lighting the scene. And whoops. Uh, but what we can do now, let's actually go ahead and adjust or create another turbulence object. So right now we have some nice undulation going, but we can apply another level of turbulence that kind of makes our whole entire uh, word kind of undulate a little bit as well. So right now it's fairly static. We have our geometry moving, but not a lot of movement in our actual uh, whole form of our text. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, uh, instead of keeping a scale very low, I'm going to use the second turbulence object 
and scale it up to about 800. So this is gonna be a very large scale noise that is gonna be driving the turbulence. And I'll also jack up the strength a little bit as well. And you'll see when I apply this to my jiggle forces, you can see that we added this nice undulation all across our object. So due to the fact that our scale of our turbulence is very high, we're creating bigger noise, bigger turbulence, and it's pushing and pulling the whole entire word here. So we're adding this nice second level of turbulence to our object and giving this nice organic movement uh, to, uh, to our object. So that's looking really, really nice. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and, uh, well, another thing that you can do is, of course, you can go and add an even bigger uh, turbulence noise. So you can see that's a little bit less. Uh, but I found 800 pretty good. But you'll notice if we bring it too low, we're basically just duplicating what that first turbulence is doing. Uh, and again, you can adjust the actual strength so you can really have this push and pull and get some really cool kind of it looks pretty psychedelic, but so much fun. This the whole jiggle deformer uh, with force is a, is a lot of fun to play around with. I had a ton of fun experimenting with this. Uh, so what you can do at, at this point as well is go into your capsule object and you can adjust the rotation segments to give this a lot more geometry to push and pull. So you'll see you'll get a lot more detail in the actual object due to the fact that we uh, up the rotation segments here. Uh, but you got to be careful that you don't add too much and slow it down. So uh, I found that just maybe a rotation segment of 50 worked pretty good. Uh, you can also adjust the cap segments, so that'll kind of smooth out the beginning and end of this object. Uh, and again, you can adjust the height segments, but uh, you don't really have to worry about the height segments so much because, again, we have that subdivision surface kind of smoothing everything out. So I'll just put that back at 50. Uh, and then the radius, uh, again, we can adjust as well. So we get a lot fatter uh, text going on. Uh, and one nice thing about whoop, one nice thing about the uh, spline wrap is you can go in here and adjust the size of the object or the size of the capsule along the uh, spline here. So I can go and give this a lot of different, uh, scale or thickness along the spline. So right now I'm giving my capsule some uneven thickness and that adds a really nice kind of custom look. Uh, and what you probably want to do is kind of look at where uh, the big parts of your, your geometry are. So maybe you want the L's really thick up at this part, but maybe thin right down here. And the same for the H. So maybe have this part thin and thick up here and then thick. Uh, again, so you can have a lot of fun just adjusting how this is looking and you can kind of move these knots around uh, in the spline editor here to, tr to try to figure out like where in the spline this is affecting. So you can create a new uh, point here by just hitting command and clicking on your spline and you can see that, okay, I'm bringing this down. This is controlling this part of the L so you can try to maybe get, I want to make this part thinner, so I just made a new knot. So this is kind of controlling right here on this part of the spline. And then I'll just bring this spline point up to kind of get these parts of the L fairly thick. And then let's see, let's move this point around and try to get this part skinny. So that's looking good. Uh, and again for the O, maybe we can try to get this part skinnier as well. So let's add a new point. And where is that controlling? So that's controlling the back part of the L. So if I just move this over a little bit, move that scale down the spline, you can see that that is now scaling down this part. So that's looking pretty perfect. So that's looking pretty good. So you can have a lot of fun just messing around and tweaking the spline editor in the size. Uh, and another thing you can do is go ahead and adjust the uh, banking or the rotation. So you can kind of have this turn to whatever part of the geometry you like. Uh, and you can even adjust the rotation. So say you want this uh, to kind of rotate 180 degrees or whatever uh, along the spline. So you just get a little bit more uh, 
dynamic kind of look to it so it's not just always facing the same direction so we have a little bit of a twist action going on there uh, and you can adjust the strength to uh, add even more rotation to it so I think just uh, rotation strength at 100 is looking pretty good uh, now we can actually go and texture this so I have this candy uh, little candy texture that I will go ahead and try to recreate here so let's go and rename this candy and what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a, a gradient in the color here. So let's create a gradient and we'll just color this pretty funky here. Let's choose uh, some magenta here, a little pink and then a little bit of yellow. And we can go give it a little bit of purple on this end. So a nice kind of pastel y kind of look. And that's just the color channel. And let's apply let's actually apply this to our object here. So we'll apply that to the capsule. And you can see that right now it's not looking too hot. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is adjust the luminance and really crank up the luminance so we have some really nice bright texture. And what I'm gonna do is create another gradient and use similar colors here. So let's do this kind of pastel-y and then or, uh, some yellow maybe, and then we'll just bring it back to, so let's go that color, and then we'll just bring it back so it kind of loops there. So you see that <clears throat> just by doing that, we just added a really nice gradient to our text. Uh, but you see that we're actually losing, we're making everything flat due to our uh, luminance here. Uh, what we can actually do that can make this a lot more organic looking is by adjusting the uh, turbulence on this, uh, on this object right here. So that'll create a little bit more organic looking. Uh, and you can see immediately that just by adjusting the turbulence and adding some turbulence there, we're getting some really nice paintbrushy type of effects here. So that looks really cool. Let's actually go into our gradient on our color channel and do the same exact thing. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, it, just having the color channel just helps a little bit. Uh, let's actually go into our reflectance and uh, really add some good reflections, some really nice reflections, and some specular. So let's go into our uh, uh, specular here. I like to change this to Beckman. Uh, just for the heck of it, I don't really know too much about the reflectance channel stuff. I just kind of experiment and see what looks good. Uh, I know I want a very strong uh, specular strength, so I'm going to bring that up to 150. And you can see that we have these really nice streaks. And I'll show you where my actual lights are on the scene. So I have one area light over to the right here and another one on the left. So you can see where the positioning is uh, so you get a better chance. Uh, better idea of where that specular is coming from. I accidentally uh, brought the specular down there. So you can see how our lights are affecting the nice specular and we're really giving this a nice kind of candy paint sort of look there. And we can adjust the color of this so maybe, maybe uh, give it a little bit of a yellowish tint to our specular. So that's looking pretty good. Now we can add some reflection and I'll just add another Beckman type and we'll go name rename this reflection and let's change this uh, blend mode to add change the specular to normal so we're adding a reflection onto our specular uh, and then our attenuation I'm gonna change to additive and I'm actually gonna do the same thing okay so that's already set as additive so just making sure so this is just adding the reflection onto uh, the specular and to our uh, luminance and color channels here. So now we can go and adjust the uh, reflection strength and the color of our reflection. So again, maybe we want maybe a kind of pinkish reflection. We can bring our Fresnel in here and I'll choose conductor uh, and just kind of just mess around and see what looks good here. So maybe those values will look pretty good. So you'll see that by putting the Fresnel in there, we're getting uh, 
a little bit nicer reflection going on. And so you can really see the specular or the reflection uh, that's coming from our uh, box lights. Uh, so what I like to do is just give this a little bit of roughness uh, just to kind of blur that uh, all the reflections a little bit because it'll make it a lot more organic looking uh, and less uh, kind of candy. So that, as we're waiting for this to render there, uh, the one thing I want to do on top of the reflection and all that stuff is go ahead and adjust the bump. So let's actually hit play here. And you'll notice that my interactive render region isn't rendering that deformation from uh, the jiggle deformer, which uh, I, I believe is a bug and it's being fixed. Uh, I kind of discovered it a while ago, but just keep that in mind. If you're doing interactive render region, your jiggle deformer deformations will not render in your interactive render region. So uh, you'll see what's going on when you actually render in the scene. So you see that we're getting a lot more of our jiggle deformation back and you can see how our specular looks and our reflection looks. So I actually would like to have a little bit more specular. So we'll crank that up a little bit. So we get some really nice, bright, uh, specular highlights there. And that's looking good. So let's go ahead and go to our bump channel. And I just want to add another layer of organic kind of bumpy or waviness to our texture via the bump channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, a noise to kind of use on the bump channel. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the noise from noise and change it to gaseous. And then what I'm going to do is crank up the, the uh, let's see, that would be the vertical scale there on the, on the Y. So you can see how if I turn this on and off, you can kind of see a subtle difference there. If I crank this up a little bit more, you'll really start to see that that adds a uh, another level of nice waviness uh, via the bump channel here. So it adds a lot more of like these kind of paint strokey uh, kind of uh, where the little individual brush hairs might have went across. Uh, so you can have adjust this. I've always noticed that if you have your strength way too high, it looks very fake. Uh, so a little bit less than what you think would probably look good. Just maybe do half of that. So I, I think 40 looks pretty good so we can render this out and actually let's you can see that that's actually a lot of bumpiness so let's actually scale up the whole entire uh, scale of our noise our global scale here and I'll actually bring the octaves down to four so it's a little bit less complex uh, noise going on and we'll render this again and see how this looks. And actually what I want to do is change the space. So right now it's applying it via the texture space uh, and that's kind of applying it and uh, applying it evenly across the UVs. Uh, but what I want to do is change this to 2D and what it'll do is kind of stretch this texture or stretch the noise out along the actual uh, text here. So just keep that in mind, changing it to 2D, it will kind of project itself differently. So you can see that we're getting a little bit more noise and let's actually, let me crank this up all the way just so you can see like a before and after. So it adds a little bit, a little bit more uh, interesting look, maybe scale this down a little bit. Uh, but you can even see in the viewport that it's just a very subtle thing. Uh, you can kind of adjust this to wherever you want. You can really crank up the strength if you'd like um, and see how that looks. But I think that's an extra layer of nice um, organic paintbrushy kind of looks and deformation to your text. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, you can see that we're getting a little bit of some uh, sharp edges here and that's just due to uh, either cranking the height segments up or just cranking up the subdivision editor here. So you'll see that already because I did that. We're kind of slowing down the scene. So you can see that if this is just our editor view anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 
because uh, it will render at this uh, three subdivision. Uh, so don't be, don't freak out if you're like, oh, I'm getting these really sharp edges. Uh, you don't really need to adjust uh, the height segments here if you really don't want to. You can just have this render out at this uh, with the subdivision renderer, and that'll just smooth everything out really nice. Uh, so then what I did was just rendered this out, uh, and we have this really nice uh, flowy, organic, paintbrush-looking uh, effect happening to our text. And that's basically how I came up with this like Laffy Taffy uh, paintbrush uh, text effect in Cinema 4D. So if you have any questions, be sure to ask it in the comments section. Uh, and I'd really like to see you guys play around with this effect and come up with your own uh, little text creations or experiments with this kind of stuff. So like I said, the Jiggle Deformer is really, really fun uh, when you use it as like a cloth deformation type of thing. So always experiment, always try new things. Uh, that's how I came up with this kind of look that uh, I'm really digging. Uh, so have fun with it, play around, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.